Hello guys, my name is Nick Artaz. Today actually is my second interview and I actually got the motivated life here today. Thank you for being my second interviewee. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, but actually I had an entire list on a Word document prior to like this entire recording, but I don't know where it is. I tried looking for it for the last half an hour, but <laughs> <laughs> but Thank you, dude. I actually, I'm surprised that I like DM'd a thousand over, felt like a thousand people. And you were one of the people that actually, uh, one of the two people that got back to me about the interview. I know I asked you on live stream if you wanted to do this. We probably DM'd since then to set this up. But thanks for everything. Thanks for being here along with everything else. It's, been really hard i can tell with a lot of people oh yeah so yeah, man. happy to be here yeah so let's just get right into it uh kind of like what i did last time i'm gonna do ask almost the exact same similar questions that if my brain can remember them <laughs> and if my right. viewers if you guys can tell this is a different kind of area for myself because i was in my basement prior to this for the first episode now I'm trying to establish where I should be for the third episode. <laughs> Part of the beta testing here. <laughs> yeah, it's in the beta testing. But uh, I guess what got you into social media, technically? Oh, that's kind of a good question. I haven't quite had it phrased like that before. Um, I guess it's it's an outlet. You know what I mean? It's it's a uh, a way to reach out. I actually had kind of been off social media at one point for a long time because I didn't much care for it. I didn't really like what was going on on there. Um, but once I actually started getting my life together and doing something worth sharing, <laughs> yeah, decided to jump back on and, and, you know, kind of share the journey I've been on. So it's obviously, it's been a pretty awesome ride so far. I've had like a lot of good feedback and everything like that. TikTok's kind of been the main driver I guess I had <laughs> like as far as social media goes, man, I had no intentions of ever jumping on there. I was just like, I don't know what this app's about. I'm still figuring it out, man. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but my little cousin, he's 22. He talked me into it. He's like, man, get a TikTok. I'm like, ah, I kind of want to figure out this YouTube thing. You know, I kind of want to figure out Instagram. <laughs> and he's like, get a yeah. TikTok. All right. Yeah. <laughs> talk about YouTube and Instagram. Uh, you have 1.4 million on TikTok. Then you have a little close to 9K on Instagram. Then on YouTube, you have 22.8K. Yeah. So, technically, what like what was your very first social media platform or outlet was? Um, I think I signed up for Instagram, and well. I think I signed up for Instagram very first and it took me a long time to get comfortable with blogging basically so I have I, I don't even know how many countless hours of footage that like will never see the light of day um, that I wanted to put on YouTube but I was just like I th that was terrible <laughs> like I had squirrel syndrome now but it was even it was just even worse that I couldn't couldn't do it you know and focus on writing and everything else so it took me a little while to to get into YouTube and actually posting videos. And, you know, I was doing firefighting, so it was only just like a for fun part-time like thing and versus now where I'm trying to make it a full-time gig, right? So. Yeah. And here's a good question that most of probably your viewers, I haven't followed you for that long. So I don't know technically the, the background of the Deadpool themed uh -huh. bike riding, but what started you uh, doing Deadpool, exactly. That is a good question. And yeah, it's kind of funny, man. Uh, I don't mind going over stuff over and over and over because I know people are new to the channel all the time, you know what yeah. I mean? And even if you put everything out, like most people only see a fraction of what you put out anyway. So, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's all good. But uh, Deadpool, why Deadpool? So um, when I was a kid, I was like really, I have a very artistic side of my family, right? So if you've ever watched uh, Looney Tunes, my great uncle was Chuck Jones, who like all the original Looney Tunes says directed by Chuck Jones in the beginning. 
Okay. So hugely inspirational as far as like cartoons and like imaginary stuff and uh, just, you know, fictional comic books. I love to draw all that stuff. So that was that was big for me. Um, loved all the, the Marvel DC movies and everything else. You know what I mean? So yeah, not really into that, obviously. Felt, kind of fell in love with Deadpool, but uh, but why why Deadpool specifically? One, he's hilarious. Let's face it, um, oh, yeah. his, his like moral compass is a little questionable, you know what I mean? Which is kind of like something that resonated with me, I guess. Like deep down, right? He wants something good for the world. Like he's like, no, this is a family movie or this is a love story, and like yeah. you know, it's got like the good values built into it. But at the same time, he's like kind of a mess and like I just feel like you know a lot of times my life has been an absolute mess <laughs> but I'm still big picture trying to do something good for the world you know what I mean so, yeah I don't know just kind of sat well <laughs> yeah and you brought me over in DC and like I'm the exact same way I Flash really stuck with me because back in seventh grade I'm like now 12th grade now so this was like a few years back now and I used to be a lacrosse player and I could basically within five seconds go from one end of the field to the another and basically everyone's like called me flash and I was like questioning like who is this guy like <laughs> and <laughs> everyone's like look him up look him up and uh my first live action uh person that I've ever watched was Grant Gustin and then the like, I can't remember the guys that did Justice League a few years back, mm -hmm. but he really got, uh, they really stuck with me, but Grand Gustin, I watched since Glee days. <laughs> yeah. Nice, a flash for you. Yeah, it's flash <laughs> for me, and, like, we had some similar stuff. I'm actually the exact same way. I'm a vlogger, kind of transitioning into, like, interview type of styles trying to stuff figure out my landscape for everything nice well you said you're in what 12th grade yeah i'm in 12th grade i'm turning 18 in february okay oh nice so what's the uh what's the big plan there i mean this is obviously something that you're interested in but i mean what's the you know if you can snap your fingers and you're doing it for a living what are you doing how are you spending your life uh <laughs> basically i'm just now flipping it over and over i've been thinking about doing the navy because a lot of my family were was in the navy mm -hmm. so it's like kind of flip-flopping between youtube auto mechanics and you like uh, i'm already losing my train of thought but navy mechanics and youtube and basically everyone's like you know, it's stereotypical. I'm like, motherfucker, like, because <laughs> I'm Latino, you know, everyone thinks that, oh, I'm stereotyping myself. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, so, you uh, gotta stop with that Latino. <laughs> <laughs> and fun fact, actually, I went to, uh, I went to <laughs> Dollar Tree last night and coincidentally enough that I was looking at my desk and I got black and red and as in Deadpool. <laughs> yeah, I like the color scheme, man. <laughs> yeah. But to get into like a more uh, personal, like not personal, personal, but like I had a few friends of mine DM me personally saying, oh, is this true? I'm like, yeah. They said, I had one uh, friend that was like, what's your favorite NBA team? And another one was like, I was like, what? He's like, NFL. So, I guess NBA and NFL, if you had to choose two, or whatever teams. Favorite teams? Oh, yeah. man. I, I was never into basketball, like, whatsoever. I, I mean, it might be just because I was, like, vertically challenged, didn't really play much at all, <laughs> like, or whatever that, whatever that was, man. I was the youngest kid in my class by, like, quite a bit. I mean, um, growing up, and so I was always, like, the, the, the last one to – you know kind of do everything there and um like growing it stopped a, a pretty early anyway i was only i'm only five eight you know but uh so basketball wasn't a thing so i never got into it never watched it or anything i have like zero interest in basketball <laughs> you know what i mean so yeah that's that's kind of that as far as football um i grew up in san diego 
literally since forever everybody was a san diego charger fan and uh oh, yeah. fans in my family so that's what i kind of grew up um in but i kind of fell out of sports like a while back i honestly just started a lot more of doing things and living my life in ways and spending way less time watching uh like anything really you know what i mean I, don't get me wrong i love going out to the bar hanging out with the boys having a couple oh, yeah. beers watching some football talking some shit whatever right but uh but i just I don't even follow sports anymore, man. <laughs> just too, <laughs> I know. Too into my stuff. <laughs> you sound a lot like my brother. He's like, I rather go out to the bar, have a few beers with the boys, you know. And a lot of people are like that nowadays, you know. Like, mm -hmm. like I said, I'm 18. I'm legally underage for drinking. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, like there's a few times I drink, and kind of my moral card is is that I won't drink. But there are some exceptions occasionally. I only got had drinking two times in my life, both family related instances. Mm -hmm. So my viewers are Moto Life's viewers. Please don't criticize me for being 18 and drinking. But at uh, least I'm doing well. Like a lot of people say I can, for my age, they thought I would probably be a lightweight when I could take a few shots. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, no judgment from me, brother, on any fronts or anything ever. But uh, just to I don't I don't know if it's any like consolation, but probably started drinking at like 13. Not that it's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, kind of was what it was, you know, it was just around <laughs> me. It was in the family. It wasn't like the greatest influence around to have. But, it, you know, that's life, man. You know what I mean? You got friends and you're insecure and you're trying to like for me, you know, like try to fit in or whatever else it might be. And you just fall into these things, man. You start experimenting. So, man, no judgment. You know what I mean? Yeah. For uh, me, I actually, a lot of my, probably my viewers know by now because this kind of blew up on my channel, blew up when it had already like 22 views. I'm pansexual. And a lot of times that my first ever boyfriend, I got with was when I was high on you know, pot and mm -hmm. a lot of people were like, oh, well, sure happened. <laughs> but what actually, it, so going on to like our, another question, what kind of is your light and day? Like, what are your goals for your social media platforms? So I, um, I listen to a lot of personal development and podcasts and, uh, you know, audio books and everything. And every once in a while, I mean, I probably listen to an hour or two a day, like every day, man. I, 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 I'm in the habit of it now, waking up and listening to it, usually something to, you know, start my day off right. And it, it orients me well so that I don't fall back into my old pit traps of, you know, being miserable, but there's a, there's a, a personal development gentleman named Jim Rohn. He, he's passed on now, but um, loved a lot of his stuff. And he posed these three questions um, in one of his videos. And it was why, why not? And why not now? And it kind of breaks those down. But one thing that hit me so profoundly was he says, why not see how many people you can rescue from oblivion and i thought to myself like wow like what a fascinating orientation and you know um, goal to chase down because i know i've had things or people in my life that have helped me along my way and i just like want to do that for others like i want to show that becoming the change is like what is you know, real. So to me, I want to, like my journey is becoming the change and showing through leading by example, um, what kind of effect that can have on you and other people and everything, you know what I mean? So many people nowadays are out there and they're starting campaigns and they're doing this and they're getting their groups together and telling everybody else what they need to do and how they need to be and whatever else. Meanwhile, their house is a mess. It's like clean yourself up, live your truths, you know, be who you want to be 
and you want to make a change, lead by example, you know, not by telling anybody. If you've ever been in a relationship, you know it doesn't work when somebody says, you need to be like this. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, hell no. You can't change people. You can't. But you can influence people. So for me, like my platform is just a matter of sharing my journey, man, and who I am and what I want to do. And, you know, there's good days and bad days and everything else in between. And that's fine. But, you know, I want to show that, like how to orient, like how I've oriented myself and that it's made a huge, like a profound effect on me. And I think that, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of becoming self-evident that it's helping others, you know, in a big way. And so that's, I mean, that's all I want to do, man. It's just like at the end of the day, like just help other people. I want to make people smile. You know what I mean? So that's the goal for me. Yeah. And going back to uh, one of your videos uh, that I've seen, like this was, I don't remember the date, but there was a kid that you met a day that the day that everyone was like, everything in Cali was going like to smoke. Then the, the kid was on the bike, a black bike, and another guy was uh, screaming out your name, I think. And he said, I'll pay for anything you want. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that, and seeing that, I feel like with younger audiences, like uh, for yourself, for one point, four million on TikTok, and so on and so forth on um, what you're growing right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people, like Charlie D'Amelio, a lot of these people, they don't see, like, I feel like they can see, like, they're changing people, but not in, a lot of us, I'm, this is my opinion, I see that they want to change people negatively. Mm -hmm. They just want to get revenue from it. Right. They don't care what people think of them. If they mm -hmm. like are sent in or something like that, you, you want to change people to see, hey, there are some good stuff in life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the time, even for myself, I was, when I was younger, fun fact for my viewers, that I was at my darkest days, that my girlfriend just broke up with me, that we spent a year together, my best friend killed himself. I tried to attempt suicide three different occasions when I was like 13. Mm -hmm. Then I started watching people. I saw that I had to have self care. Mm -hmm. People like you that I want around to see like younger audiences believe, hey, there are some good stuff in life. Like I saw that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. What change? We had to change ourselves first. Like you said earlier, mm -hmm. change comes within ourselves, not within other people. Exactly. Exactly. You have to want to change too. You know what I mean? Like you tell somebody to do something and they don't, they don't want to, they're not ready to, they're only going to get defensive. You know what I mean? So it's like, you, you know, there's nothing that we really control in life except for our own decisions. Like there's nothing, everything is out of your control except for your choices. So yeah you know, within your choices, obviously, you have a, the ability to form your future to the best that's possible, right? I mean, just because you do something right every day doesn't mean that you're not going to get in a car accident and die tomorrow and never reach that goal. Like, we're out of control of most everything, right? But if you can just, you know, like you said, man, just find a positive light to shoot for and make your choices oriented in that direction, then who knows what the outcome could be? You know what I mean? Who knows what the ripple effect is? You know, the, the, a simple kind act just ripples outward for forever, potentially. You know what I mean? You could change somebody's life. And like you said in that video, you know what I mean? Like that was something that was, I was doing a Venmo challenge. People had donated to that. So I had money to like do a kind, do kind deeds for people that all just happened to transpire on the day I hit a million followers on TikTok and I was cruising, you know, bought that other uh, guy, his gas for his motorcycle, ran into that homeless gentleman and was just like, dude, what a perfect opportunity. You know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah. you know, the universe said, Hey, here you go, man. Do you know what I mean? And I have people, yeah, you know, saying stuff on my TikTok and everything like, well, whether it was for content or not, like it was still good on you and whatever else. And, like the thing was 
I was doing this stuff before I was filming anything. You know what I mean? I was doing random acts of kindness for people. I was already hosting a scholarship at my high school for several years. I, you know, helped found a nonprofit organization for veterans and all these things that nobody will, you know, has ever seen. And so for me, it's like, you know, there's nothing about this that I want to um, impress anybody. Like, it's not about me, you know, it's like, I want to impress upon people that there's a, you know, a better way of life or a different way of life, we'll say, for, that has worked for me. And it's through kindness and, you know, giving back and helping others. So I just, I'm all about spreading that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And for some people, like I've noticed, like, uh, not so much I thought, but my, okay. My very first episode uh, with BBS uh, for most of my viewers that see my first episode, it, I kind of was like, yeah, what's the plans for your goals? I'm not sure if I asked him that, but I think I asked him. But he was basically saying that, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. blah. I just want to do the random acts of kindness for some people. Mm-hmm. I think I asked him after recording. I'm not exactly sure. But I asked him, yeah, it was after the recording. I was like, hey, what's your plans for the future for your content? And he's basically saying oh i want to do this this and this to help other people see the light in the day Mm -hmm. so with like kind of wrapping this up is there any questions you want to ask me before we decide to end this recording yeah so um as far as you know this this interviewing thing because this is actually something that i'm interested in jumping into as well starting to do podcasts, interviews, stuff like that with other content creators and, and everything like that. Um, what's your goal, man? Try to influence other people to for the brighter day, like we kept on saying, to see that where I had left off years ago, because I was six at that time. Like it was, I was very young when I started kind of YouTube when YouTube was just blowing up mm-hmm. and I can see the change in myself. I can change, see the change in my personality over time. Mm-hmm. And I think my, at first I just wanted the money. Now I want it. It's now not the money is to see that I can put positivity in the world and positivity into everyone else. And I guess just let people decide if they want to go through with their plans in life or change your plans otherwise. Mm-hmm. So is there anything else you want to say or questions you want to ask me? Just as far as uh, I'm intrigued as far as your um, auto mechanics goes, because that was something that I had pursued when I was younger quite a bit and went to college and took some classes there as well and i mean just still to this day love doing it so what's uh what's your big i mean what do you like about that what are you into as far as that goes uh for myself actually i i want like i was at the age of like 15 i wanted to at least i have my father my uncle and a bunch of other families that even i heard of that are into cars, they are car mechanics. I just like working on cars and I have a car mechanic simulator, which I actually do use frequently, occasionally. Mm-hmm. I had the chance to. That's pretty dope. What are you uh, What are you into as far as cars, trucks, motorcycles, uh, what you like? I guess uh, for myself, I'm into like exotic cars, but also trucks as well. What's the dream? Uh, a lot of people say Bugatti and Lamborghini, but my one fantasy car is like, I feel like this car is really underrated. The R35 Nissan GTR. <laughs> you know, the only thing I would change about that is that I would take out the the, the paddle shifting and put an actual six speed in it. <laughs> I'd do a conversion because um, I love, I know it's not going to shift as fast. I, I know there's like, trust me, I know, but I <laughs> love the r30 godzilla man 
Who oh, yeah. Dollar 34, yeah. though, back, like, when, uh, if you're into Fast and Furious, Dollar 34 on Brian's car. Yeah. That was sick, and I want to have the exact same model and exact same decals and stuff. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I don't even know what. <laughs> I would lose it to have one of those. I, I, I want the R34 and R35 for sure. Um, I, not like there's anything wrong with 33s, 32s, but uh, I yeah. just... Yeah, I have a tendency to lean towards those other ones. But man, out of out of any car, you going for a Nissan, huh? <laughs> yeah. A lot of people say, why don't you let one of the Lamborghini? I'm like, dude, yeah, I want a Lamborghini Aventador one day, but I want my very first car to be, at least be like a Ford GT Mustang or Nissan GTR. <laughs> my, my brother actually found, like, he's got a Shelby GT500 Mustang. Mm-hmm. And then what, what year is that? I want to say like 15, 16. Okay. I believe, I'm not sure. It's like one of the older, older, like early 2000s model. I think. Oh, gotcha. So, like, I'm not sure if it's a 15, 16, or early 2000s, but it's like one of those models. Nice. Yeah. I'm a sucker for the McLaren F1 personally. <laughs> i think a lot of people are too yeah but like the, i'm talking about like the early generation like mid 90s mclaren oh, yeah. like a real driver's car man <laughs> that's my jam but again if i could snap my fingers right because those things are i don't know how many millions <laughs> but well hey man i appreciate you having me on here hey you're welcome i know a lot of people uh if you want to promote on your uh, TikTok, whatever you want to do, I know I'll be uh, doing that on my Instagram saying, hey, just did the Moto Life's interview. Come watch. Absolutely. Well, if you have this recording, man, we'll, we'll get it uploaded to like Google Drive or something so I can download it and throw it on my YouTube as well and shout you out if you don't mind. Uh, I don't mind that. I'll, I think I can, uh, yeah, I think I can do it through the Google Drive or I'll email you it personally or attach you to it yeah yeah whatever works best i appreciate it man um thanks for hitting me up and, and following through you know what i mean and making this yeah. happen because i enjoy like it i said man. you're one of the few people that actually got back to me so <laughs> i hear that a lot. i'll see you guys all later Moto and i are out